Now, Pip, tell us a bit about... Um, there are lots of people who are doing youth work, they're doing community work, they're, they're involved in difficult settings, and they find themselves uh, confronting lots of difficult experiences. And it generates feelings. And what, a lot of what you seem to be talking about is about how people can... how important feelings are and uh, how to manage feelings. Can you talk a little bit about that and your experience of that? Just how feelings can you come out of a youth club and... Yeah, when I, in 1979, I yeah. did my first study on gangs. Yeah, yeah. I was working with gangs and I realised that it wasn't all the sort of educational deprivation, housing deprivation, the number one was emotional deprivation, as we used to call it. Now we call it emotional intelligence, okay. emotional literacy. So in, back in those days, kids couldn't communicate. They yeah. couldn't express themselves. They pulled down the emotional shutters to survive in a tough environment. Now what happens is, lots of people, including leaders and ministers and stuff, were not in touch with our feelings, because uh, and yet feelings drive often behaviour. So the thing is what I work on is emotional intelligence and emotional literacy to get people to be able to, when they feel something, is be able to put a word to it. So the idea of emotional literacy, if you can have a feeling and then put a word to it, that you're becoming literate about communication. For instance, if I say to you, you made me sick, mm. that is an aggressive comment, which is usually dumping and it's usually the finger as well, okay. as people say. But if someone says, I feel that's upset because of what you said, Andy. Yeah. That is a totally different thing because it's me sharing my feelings and it's rather not, than... Yeah, I'm not giving you the responsibility of it. I'm not, that's, I'm not dumping it on yeah, you. It's yeah. not your fault. They are my feelings. Yeah. When we have feelings, there are no one else's feelings. They're ours. So we have the responsibility of our own feelings. So that is just one thing. And that can... Kids who, are, who commit crimes, either the extreme violence or the... Even the more simple crime are driven often by emotion, frustration, anger, loneliness. Uh, they're not driven by a thought out yeah. person. Yeah. So part of the wholeness thing, which we believe in as Christians, is that people can become whole in the emotional sense. And emotional intelligence is bound up in spiritual intelligence. So they both, I, I work on both of them. They're both vital. I said to the group today that... Uh, it all depends on the lens that you use. Make your gaze beautiful. That whole thing about we can look at a person and yeah. see the behaviour, yeah. but we can't see their experience, where they've come from, the hurts, the wounds. Yeah. We don't know. I've just been talking to adults here at this convent about, and they're holding things in because they can't share it. Yeah. Now, obviously, there needs to be people giving people permission yeah. to talk about these things. Yeah. So, and what happens is people, like one fella shot his wife and daughter and burned yeah, his house yeah, down because yeah. he was in debt he couldn't talk about yeah, it yeah. so these things need to be talked about yeah. really so, so there is like a, a conversation where people can actually become literate about the emotions yeah. so we all need to be able to have people to talk to one on one and a group that's yeah. why community is so important yeah. people can belong and in a community it can be sharing a sharing community